Are we getting a new one of these? Yeah, you guys are the only. No one else said that all day long. I'll have to do that sometime. Today. I was thinking that. I was thinking about that too. Yeah, because I want to see. Yeah. Thank you, uh, wheel throwers. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, come over here. Jake, come over here so you can see. I got a couple spots here. Oh, wow, we got some spots up. here. Perfect score. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Damn, look at that. Yeah, they're, they're different. And I'm going to explain right now. Shit, I'm a beast. All right, don't cuss on my tape because oh, I'm, uh, I'm videotaping myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't cuss okay. on my tape. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Okay, we He didn't mean to say that. All right. <laughs> Thank you, wheel throwers. You're awesome. All right. We are moving on. Uh, I didn't say this all day today, but I'm going to explain it like this. You guys have learned a major foundation of working in uh, hand-building clay. You learned pinch, coil, slab, uh, slab box. You learned uh, slab cylinder. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start getting a little bit more advanced. Okay? So this thing right here that I wrote down a while back in your learning goal Prior knowledge is going to play a major part in what we do on a daily basis. We are assuming that you understand how to make a cup at this point. Does that make sense? We assume that you know how to make a cup. All right? But we are making an altered slab pitcher. It's going to be like a slab cup on steroids. Okay? Uh, write down the notes from here to here, and I'm going to explain some things. Please watch. It's going to be very important that I'm going to be drawing some cylinders up here and some altering ideas. It's very important that if somehow I do something that you find somewhat interesting, that you do what with that information? You write it down. I'm going to do some crazy stuff up here, okay? And it might register with you saying, wow, that would be insane. At this point, we want insane, crazy, awesome pots. All right? Not saying that I want you to do some things that are, are so difficult. Um, I want you to really just you know do something that you feel good about. Okay? So with that being said, we are gonna do altered slab pitcher. What is the biggest difference between this pitcher and the cup? What's the biggest difference? Yes. Um it, we're gonna alter it like cut fold. Yeah, that's true. But what is the, the, the easiest main difference? Yes. It's bigger. It's bigger. It's on steroids. Okay, it's on steroids. All right? So with that being said, what is going to dictate or what is going to guide us with how with the size of our slab cylinder is going to be? Huh? Mm -hmm. A what? A template. Okay, a template. You guys are going to use another template, but the template's going to be bigger. Emotional extra credit, how big was the cup template? Five by nine. Five times eight. No. Five by, five by, no? Eight by five? Same thing. Close. Five by three? Close. No. Oh, my gosh. Eight, eight by eight. No. Wasn't it five You're by eight? Five by ten. Five by ten? Okay. Five by ten. So, with that being said, five by ten made the size of a cup. All right? So, I have, I'm going to have four shop studio templates that you guys can use for um, this assignment, okay? So with that being said, you guys, as you start thinking about what you want to make, you need to think, is it going to be short and wide? Is it going to be medium? Maybe it's going to be more narrow, okay? The templates will be able to help guide you with that, all right? This is 8 by 18 and 3 quarters. Why it's 18 and 3 quarters? I have no idea at all. I think someone altered it and uh, they decided to make sure that they wrote it down. All right? That, this right here, and what are we going to use for this project? Uh, what method? Slab. 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 Where, where are we going to roll it out? Slab roller. Right after slab turn. roller. Okay? You're going to make a big slab, and I'll tell you how much clay to use and, and how to make sure that you can get a big enough slab for your template. But this is going to be the size of your cylinder. Okay? Everything that we do in this 
is going to start out with a cylinder like this. This pitcher right here was a straight up and down cylinder when it started. I did a lot to it, yep. And it, the cylinder was made on the wheel, but then I, I, I altered it hand building. So this is 18 by eight, or 8 by 18 and 3 quarters. If I want to make this wider like this, how could I do that using this template? If I want it wider, how could I do that? You made it narrow. You had to throw it more. Maybe, but how could I use the template to measure it correctly? Slide it over. I would slide it over. Okay, this is what I'm. So you guys are going to have these shop templates, but you can actually use them and change it a little bit to the size that you want. So if I wanted this longer, like even wider, like this instead of like this, I could lay this on a slab, draw my square, and then I could slide it a little bit more with the same line, slide it a little bit more, and then trace out the corner, and it would be longer and wider. Could I do that with the height of this? So it's this wide here. Could I make this about 12 inches high? Mm -hmm. How would I do it? You slide it up. I would slide it up. So on my, on my uh, slab, I would trace this, and I would have a square that looks just like it, but then I would slide it up and then retrace the top part. I would slide it with the, the side line here, and I'll help you with that. But for the most part, you're just going to cut this out. I might have maybe said a little bit too much. And th this would be the pot that you want. This is the, the most popular one, 11 by 14. 11 inches tall, 14 inches wide. Makes this cylinder right here. It's about a medium cylinder, kind of straight up and down. If I want it to be wider, I could do the same thing by extending the template to the left or the right and then recutting it. Okay? So I have a couple other ones. Uh, what I want you to think about when you do some designs is is your cylinder kind of a shorter cylinder? Is it wide? Is it tall? Is it narrow? Think about it. All right? The size of the template dictates the size of the cylinder. So these are different sizes and these are the templates. Altering possibilities. So for today and tomorrow, this is what I want you to do. Everything we do is going to be out of a cylinder like this. Okay? You're going to make a cylinder first and then we're going to change it. Altering in I made a point earlier today that there are not a lot of schools that are doing stuff like this. I see this as extremely advanced. Um, I've had people from UCF come and they see what students are doing with the altered pictures and they're like, how do they do that? Okay? Because I, I think that you're ready and you'll see all the pictures that we have up on the uh, PowerPoint here in a sec, all student pictures, all with the same amount of time invested as you. They did awesome pictures, you will too. All right. So we start out with a pitcher, all right? One idea for altering will be that maybe you want to push the clay out, all right? What could I do to push this out? Where, what, what can I do to push this? What, but let, let's talk about what part of the form, what could I do? What part of the form? Yeah, pushing. All right, so let's, why, let's do what he says. I could have a cylinder, I could get down if we're not going to change the bottom uh, like by darting or leafing, which I'll, I'll talk about later, we should add a base onto it to stabilize it, and then we're going to push it out. You would put it on your, um, on your banding wheel, maybe on the stool. You'll get your hand down to the bottom, and you'll slowly start pushing it out while it's turning on the wheel. So you could make it go out like this by pushing you can make the form look like that. It's not even. Uh, well, that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Yours won't either. So that that is pushed out. What else could I do to it to push? But we can't just squeeze it and push it in. That's going to be darting. I could maybe paddle it in a little bit. But what I could push out the rim like this to make it wider. like that, and then I have a different form than a cylinder. Is this making sense? Yeah. You had a cylinder, you pushed out. I could push it out here if I want, and have a form that looks like that. It's not even. Sorry. 
but I could push out in this area too, have that out, have this out, this would be a good altered pot. Um, what, one little trick I'm going to tell you right now, and I don't know if you guys want to write it down. If you wrap the pot and you put rubber bands evenly, you can push out in between the rubber bands and it can be very interesting. You just have to set the rubber bands on the cylinder the way you want them to be. Uh, in the past, and this is pushing out also, what I used to do with my pots that were very popular, um, I made this form first, which was a cylinder, and I pushed out here and here, and this is called something called leafing that I'll explain in a sec, where it curves, but I would take a rubber band and I would put the rubber band on the pot at an angle, and on the pot at an angle, just lay the rubber band there, then above the rubber band, I would get in there with my hand and I'd start pushing it out and it would push out a line like this that went all the way around the pot and it made the pot look like it's doing what? Melting. Maybe melting. Like well, overlapping. something like that though, right? right yeah, it, it makes it look like it's overlapping. That's the new way I do it. That's by cutting it. But this was by pushing it. And the line of the, of the rubber band gave me the line where I push out above it. Okay? I had students take this, and this is what's really cool and interesting about this process, is that students will see ideas that I have, and they'll take them further. I had, I've had students where they just take rubber bands and they place them however, and then they just push out areas in between the rubber bands. You know, it just gives it a crazy, interesting look. Another thing, it will. It just stays right there. And you'll push right in between them. Um, another thing I was talking about as far as pushing earlier, and you know what, I'm going to draw a few smaller ones because I don't want everybody to think that um, I'm only talking about tall cylinders. All right? One thing you could do, you could take like something like a circle and stamp it into the pot. You could take small ones big ones like that, medium sized ones, find a circle and stamp it into the pot. Okay? Then I could go in with my inside hand and what could I do? Push it out where the circles are. Because you can actually see where you're pushing. You just look to the side and you'll see where you're pushing, where, it, where the circle is, and you'll have these bubbles kind of coming out the pot. Or you can do the opposite and try to push it in to make it dent in if you wanted to. Okay? Pushing can be very interesting and effective. It could be squares, it could be uh, triangles, diamonds, organic shapes, anything. All right? Pull, cut. Here's some possibilities for cutting. Okay? I, I should have said this earlier today, but you can sit there and alter your cylinder just by doing that. Okay? You mark a line, maybe with a... Um, a piece of yarn or a, uh, uh, a rubber band, you cut it off, it's altered. I could take and do another one down here like this, cut that one. Now this form right here would be more like a parallelogram where it would look like this now, which would be a different interesting form. Okay, just by cutting. Here's something major. You could take this, you could cut it in four pieces. All right? This is major stuff here. Take this, cut it into four pieces. I would put a, after I cut it, I would put a, a slab on this one, a slab on the bottom, a slab on the top, a slab on the bottom, a slab on the top, a slab on the bottom, close them all up. Then I would do something different with them, where I have this one here, which is the top, maybe the next one over is staggered, then maybe this one goes even staggered more, and then this last one is in that realm there, okay? So you could actually score and slip and put them back together, but then after it's all done, we would want to make sure that we cut out this one. You know, there's just little, you guys won't know all the answers at this point, but we'll, we'll cut out these areas so that it goes all the way down. And you wouldn't see it from the outside anyways. 
And just remember this, everything that we do today is going to be the possibility of a pitcher, okay? But I just want you to think about altering techniques and fun, cool things to do, all right? Through cutting, I've had students make this form. Yes? Would that handle growth? No. Like eventually put sweet tea or something like that? I don't know. You'd probably hold it by that and by the bottom, all right? I've had, through cutting, I've had students come up with this form, okay? If you really think what the clay would do if you cut it, um, then you might be able to figure something out. Now, I'm going to draw this. If any, the, the most difficult form I've ever had anybody do with altered slab pitcher is that. The most difficult I've ever had. No, it wouldn't even be paddling. Okay? Now, by the end of what I do up here, you should be able to figure this out. Some people will. Some people won't. Uh, I had a girl do that like my second or third year of teaching. Uh, nobody else has ever done it since. But she had the idea and she pulled it off. Um, add, subtract. You could actually, another part of cutting, you could take and you could make like two circles on your cylinder. You could cut this out on this side, take the same circle out on the opposite side, Cut that one out, cut this one out, and cut the opposite circle out. And you could actually make a small cylinder. I, I've had people do this every year where you would make a cylinder and put it through to the other side to close it up, and then you'd have this tube going through the pot. Okay? So you'd have this circle cut out, and then on the opposite side, you would trace it, and then you would make a, a skinny cylinder that would just go inside the hole and you would push it through, score and slip, expand it, flare it out, and it would be good. Okay? And I, there will be a couple pictures up there on that. Um, rearranging, that was some of the stuff I was talking about. I've had people take, like, cut out areas and shapes and put, like, slabs with texture on the back of it. Like, they stamped a, a bunch of textures and they put the slab behind it and then maybe pushed it out a little bit. It's endless, absolutely endless. All right, I need to move on to leafing and darting. I need you to pay close attention to this because a lot of people are going to want to leaf and dart or deef and larf or lart. Okay? So here's my cylinder. Darting, and I wrote it down, is cutting a triangle out of the rim or the base of the pot. How do we know this already? Because you explained it um, one day we were talking about if someone's pot was too wide. If someone's pot was too wide, we can cut the leaf out and it makes it go in what direction? In. 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 Okay. So, with that being said, if I wanted my pot to go in, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw what I want it to do. I want the top and the bottom to do this. Okay, so let's just say that this is the pot that I want. You guys are going to be doing stuff like this in your sketch pad. So this is what I want, and I want a big hole right here, and I'm going to put a slab in there. Would that be a cool picture or what? Yeah. It could be. All right? So to get my pot to go in like that, I have to dart it. So here's my original cylinder. This is what you'll do for your designs. If I want my pot to go in that much, what I do is I draw a dart on my pot like that. I cut it out, and I fold the clay in, and score and slip, and it makes it go in. I would do it on the back side, cut that out, score and slip, and put it in. Two leaves or two darts will make your pot oval, from the top view. Your pot would be like that. If you want it to stay round, you'd have to do four leaves or four darts. Okay? So, with that being said, I can't tell what this would actually do on my pot. But if I draw it one way, a different way, I can tell what that size dart would do to my pot. So, think about this. Here's my cylinder again. And this will help you with your planning. You might come up with cool ideas this way. 
that triangle that looks like this, okay? If I want to know what effect it would have on my pot, I draw half of it on the side of my pot, okay? So watch what I do. I'm going to draw half of this dart. That is half of this, okay? Where's the other half? It's on the other side. We don't see it, okay? Now, if I cut out that dart and I score and slip and I put it in, it looks like this. I mean, exactly like that. Okay? That's what that will do. That triangle right there on that pot gives, I mean, it's exact what it does. If I wanted the bottom part to, to uh, go in that much, that is half of my dart. Does that make sense? Okay? So you're going to see some pots up on the screen, and you're going to have to be able to determine whether or not it was leafed or dart and how much. Uh, there are people... that get very dramatic, okay, where their dart goes from this side, or this wide, all the way down to the corner, and it gets the same on the other side like that. This would go bye-bye, there would be one in the, uh, in the back, they would all go bye-bye. You, you cut them, you score and slip them, and you can make this form here, a cone, okay? Seriously, you could do that. And that, that cone right there, you could turn it over, and this could be the foundation of your pitcher, okay? You could make a little um, stand that it sits in. Wait, no, it would do, yeah, never mind. So you wouldn't see that. It would sit in there like that. You have your spout, you have your handle. Pretty cool picture. Okay? All that by darting. All right? Now, so a dart is cutting triangles out. A leaf is cutting what out? <laughs> what does a what does a leaf do? Make it wider. It's cutting leaves. To make it go in and it looks it makes a curve all right so watch what this is a leaf it looks just like a leaf this is part of it and what I just showed you is part of it too um, this right here is a leaf that would be cut out on the side of a pot okay you cut that out I can't tell what that would do I can't sit there on my paper and go like this but how could I draw it to see what the leaf does on the side of the pot so I take that same leaf, I draw half of it right there on my pot, I get rid of the line, that's what it does, okay? I do the same thing on this side. I could even use that leaf as a template and trace it again, not have one that's even. I could take, and do, what would this be if I cut triangles out of the bottom? Darting. Darting. I could take that off, right there. Is it changing? Then, what could I do in here? Another uh, leaf. I could push it out or do another leaf. But I, I would choose to push it out like that. Is there a base? Right, it looks like a classical, traditional base. It, but I mean, there are people that they're, they, they want to get really wild with this thing. And they'll just sit there and they'll do one there, one there, one there, you know, maybe maybe a long one here like that. So these would all be leaves. And it's specifically that size that you draw on your pot to make it do that. Where would you put the handle? I don't know. We're going to talk about handles later. I would probably put the spout over here and a handle going from here to maybe this point. We'll talk about that later. Too much information. All right, so leafing and darting. Do we kind of understand what, what's going on with leafing and darting? Darting, triangles cut out of the base or the rim. Leafing, you can do this anywhere that you want. It will give you the curve that you want.
Okay, one more. Long, big leaf from top to bottom. Gives me that curve right there. Um, I could do one medium leaf here. I could push out from here to here, and that is my form right there. Okay? Now, one variation before I show you some pictures, because a lot of cool pictures. We're not going to be able to go through a lot of, uh, I have so many to show you, and, and I can't go through all of them. But one thing real quick, there is a variation, did I even write it down? I didn't write it down. There's a lart, and there's a deef, okay? Which is the marriage of all of them together, okay? With that being said, if I don't want, if I could do one of these up here where this is a half of a leaf. See what that is? See what it? See how it curves like a leaf? I could do that, but that, the shape I'd be drawing is this on my pot. Not a triangle, it's a curved triangle at the bottom, half of a leaf. I could do the same thing over here, like that. See how it gives me a different kind of, of a curve up to the neck of the pot? All right, so that makes it different. That's a, that's a leaf dart, okay? The other thing is that you can do, instead of doing a leaf on the side of the pot, you could do the, the triangle, triangular leaf, and what would that look like? Can you figure it out? Like this. Right, what, what shape would that be? It would be a diamond, okay? So I could take this here, this is my diamond like that, that's half of my diamond, okay? The other half is...